another devotional that he shared with me. And I just want you to really think about this when I share it because um, Jesus is really trying to show us of what we need to put on to be prepared for the wedding. And let's see, it was May, it was, I read May 18th, but it was really May 19th. And, I, and God knew that would happen purposely. He did this purposely. Because sometimes I, sometimes I'm not paying attention. And so he finds a way to get me to pay attention. So sometimes I'll read the wrong, from the wrong day, and he'll show me something. Literally, I just opened it to May 18th. So hard jobs. Christ had to put on a hard job. To be compassionate, to be humility can sometimes be hard to do, especially in the times that we're living in. It's hard. It truly is. We want to be right. We want to be uh, validated. We want uh, people to respect us and honor. But in the end, we end up hurting people and ourselves and God. So nobody benefits from that, you know? So hard jobs. Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew what was ahead. And that is what was to be very ugly. So Jesus was praying. In the, just a picture of him right now. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he knew the job that was ahead. The task. He was the bride. He's the bridegroom. And so in order for him to marry his bride, he had to come as a lowly servant and to be beaten, to, to have stripes for our iniquity, for our sins. He didn't come wearing a tuxedo or, you know, on a, on a horse as a king. I mean, when he comes back, he's coming back like that. But that's not how he came to, uh, to purchase his bride. And in this dream, I saw that I also have to put on these garments. I have to put on more compassion. I have to put on more um, humbleness and love and gentleness and all those fruits of the Spirit. And so he asked God if there was any other way to accomplish what they had planned, which was to make a way for you and me to have a personal relationship with him. He was willing to go through the pain and the ugliness. Christ, to become a bridegroom, did not come as someone was wearing a tuxedo. He was made literally ugly. He was beaten. And so that means for us to put on compassion and love. Just going back to that verse I saw, Exodus 14, 14. Let me just read that really quick. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. So in the times that we're living, it just seems like fight or flight, right? Like you need to react, you need to uh, defend. Jesus will be your defense. There is nothing you need to do. And it's really hard sometimes. I know I'm struggling with that and I ask if you guys can pray for me for that. And I pray for you guys too. But in the times that we're living, to really show ourselves approved, that people hurled insult at Christ and he did not retaliate. And so we too ourselves have to put on, we have to not retaliate, you know? Um, he put on ugliness for you and me as a bridegroom, and he loves you that much. Sometimes doing what is hard is what's needed, and Jesus did this for you, and he will help you do hard things for him. Are you willing? As he was. And so the verse was, in Matthew 26, 42, it says, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away from me, may your will be done, not mine, you know? Not, may your will be done, you know? And so, when you, when you, um, when you say your vows, you're, you're willing to, to marry this person, you know? You're making a, you're a commitment he took on, he took this, he took the wrath, the cup of the wrath of God for our iniquity, for our sins, so that we can attend to this wedding, whether we're wearing, yet we're, 
the, the, we're wearing the garments of repentance. What I saw is repentance, you know? What I saw the other, the bride's grooms, they were so beautiful in their dresses. Um, they seemed more better than I, you know? And the truth is, is that we need to esteem others as better than ourselves, you know? As a bride, you know? So here's just a prayer for my devotional. It says, Dear Father in Heaven, I am humble and grateful and amazed at the sacrifice of Jesus. Every time I read this verse, I realize anew how much you love me. I pray, God, for the, the courage to do hard things for you because, Jesus, you did hard things for me. In your mighty name, I pray, Jesus. Amen. So, you know, when it comes, what's going on in the world, to tell the truth, to uh, deny yourself, it is hard, especially when people are hurling insults at you. It's hard to keep your... It's hard, I know. Uh, you know, reading the rest of this devotional, God loves his children regardless of their sins, their past, their failings. Uh, we we aren't dealt with as we what we deserve, rather according to his great love for us. Can we say the same about how we treat those around us? So, so there's a reflection here. Do we really hold compassion, you know, for people around us? You know, are we compassionate? Are we slow to anger? Are we full of love, you know? Or are we easily offended or impatient, you know? Or are we trying to control and orchestrate and do things ourselves and not really, that's when we rely, this is where the Muslims and um, Judaism, you know, these are works. When you rely on your own strength, truly the Bible says strengthen yourself in the Lord. The Lord renews your strength. It's not much of your own. The scriptures actually help you, uh, but he gives the strength. He gives it. Paul says, you know, all day, um, I plead for, for the Lord to remove this thorn in my flesh. And the Lord replied, um, my strength is, you know, my strength is, let me, you know, it's, my strength is sufficient for, for you. For when you are weak, I am strong. I hope I even, I hope I said that right. You know, when you are weak, I am strong. When I am weak, God is strong. When you are weak, God is strong. I, and so Paul said, so I boast in my weaknesses because it's not about us. It's about his glory. He gets all the glory and honor. If I were able to do these things that I'd so much desire to overcome, I try to do these things myself, um, I will keep falling and I will keep uh, coming back void. To God is showing me that I cannot do it alone, that I need to truly surrender to his will and that he does the work in me where he gets all the glory and honor. And it's not I myself. Nobody can do a round of applause for me, but to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So choosing compassion, doing the Father's will, let his will be done. And remembering Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. So this is a spiritual warfare that a lot of us are, you know, in the world, you see what's going on. They're attacking and you want to defend and you, that's what our job is to do to defend. But in the process is, is that our hearts are growing cold. You know, there's a church that, you know, hates all these things and that their hearts start to become far from him. So we have to remember his love and, and, and walk in that love. Because the rapture is going to be happening very soon with these dreams I see. It's very soon. No one knows the day or the hour, but it comes like a thief. Nobody was prepared for any of these weddings I've seen or even the rapture. Nobody was prepared, prepared for it. So I hope to see you guys next time. Peace.